My brothers and sisters, we gather this evening to bless the oils which will be used during the coming year in the celebration of the sacraments of the church. And we come together at this unique gathering in which the priests, the deacons, religious and people of all our 82 parishes join with me as your bishop in the celebration of the Eucharist at the beginning of the most solemn days of the church's year. I welcome each and every one here, priests, deacons, religious, lay men and women, as well as those involved in specialized ministries throughout the diocese. And I greet in a special way the seminarians of the Diocese of Grand Rapids, many of whom are here tonight and many whom are ministering this evening as well. The Chrism Mass marks the life and celebrates the life and mission that we, each one of us, have been given by the Lord. We seek tonight a profound renewal of all that makes us instruments of the Lord in our society today. Here we are to receive the gifts that we need if we are to fulfill the great invitation and commission that has been given to us all. The first oil to be blessed this evening is the oil of the sick, which is used in the sacrament of anointing of the sick and dying. For most of us, it is the last sacrament that we will receive on this earth before we go to God. This oil reminds us that the sick, the suffering, the dying, are at the center of the church and at the very heart of her service. Our final anointing with the oil of the sick gives us strength to pass from this world to the life of the world to come. And there is nothing more important than that. The second oil to be blessed is the oil of catechumens, which is used at the beginning of the celebration of baptism. As part of the prayer of the church, to protect us from Satan, the spirit of evil, the father of lies. In point of fact, however, this oil will be used almost exclusively to anoint infants at their baptism. And when we would consider these two oils, the oil of the sick and the oil of catechumens, we can understand something about the church and her priorities. Who is the focus of the church's care and concern? We see that the answer given in these two oils is human life, near its beginning and near its end. The sick, the suffering, and the very smallest of children. And here we see the kingdom of God emerging, not among the powerful and the strong, but among the weakest and the smallest. Those who don't count for much in the eyes of the world. But we know that Jesus identifies with such as these. For as, ever, for as often as you did it to the least of these, my brothers and sisters, you did it to me. There is, of course, a third oil to be blessed, and its importance is reflected in the name that the church gives to tonight's liturgy, the Chrism Mass. The church uses chrism in the principal sacraments of consecration. Most fundamentally, Chrism is used in baptism. After our sins 
have been washed away by the waters of baptism immediately. We are anointed with chrism signifying that we now belong to Christ, that we have been clothed in Christ, and that we share in Christ's priestly, prophetic, and royal nature. All of us share in Christ's anointing. All of us are called to holiness. Chrism is also used in the consecration of a church, the building in which all of us, God's holy people who are one in Christ, worship God our Father. The church's walls are anointed, so too the altar on which the holy sacrifice of the Mass will be celebrated. And of course, chrism is used in the conferral of the sacrament of holy orders by which men are configured to Christ to serve his church as priests and bishops. In the words of tonight's preface, the Lord chooses men to become sharers in his sacred ministry, acting in the person of Christ the head and in the name of the church. They are to give up their lives for the Lord and for the salvation of their brothers and sisters. They are to offer to God a constant witness of faith and love. Today I want to thank my brother priests, as I'm sure we all do, for their faithfulness and their ministry. Our priests are good priests, sincere and generous. Now we priests are thoroughly human, as probably you all know, which means that we have our flaws and we have our sins. And yet we are glad to be priests, to be priests in service of you. We are glad to serve the church that we love. And if I might speak for my brothers, we are willing to renew our commitment today, this evening. And there are two things for me in particular, and my guess is that my fellow priests share this as well, that give us a great deal of encouragement. The first is the enduring generosity of our senior priests who want to continue their ministry after they have stepped down from the full demands of parish responsibilities. I don't know where we would be without them. And secondly, what else gives us encouragement is the enthusiasm of those who are stepping forward to test their vocation in seminary formation, 23 in all. And I'm happy to say that the deacons who are assisting at Mass today Douglas Braun and Bill Vanderwerf will be ordained as priests in June, along with four other seminarians who will be ordained as deacons. This is good news for us all, and we do rejoice. My brothers and sisters, today the oil of catechumens, the oil of the sick, and the newly consecrated chrism will be taken away from here to every parish in the diocese. May these oils effect a deep renewal in the lives of all who are anointed, in the lives of those who accompany those who are anointed with their love and prayers, and in the lives of all who administer these sacraments. Then we will indeed be rooted in Christ ready to face the challenges of today with confidence, determination, and strength.